We're doing a London listed company next, and that is another giant in the liquor business, and that is Diageo PLC. Remember, this one is in whiskey with brands like Johnny Walker, Smirnoff. No, that's not whiskey, that's vodka. Captain Morgan, that's rum, I think. Bailey's, that, that's cream. I'm getting a little bit stretched here. Tankerai, what is that? That is uh, gin. gin. Yep. And then, of course, we're back with whiskey when we talk J&B and Bells. And then, of course, they own Guinness as well. So this one, of course, is the combination, I think, of Grand Metropolitan and... A distiller's of, company. Yes, exactly. Back in the 97 Ma, and then they combined in this Diageo name, of course, is one of those designed by an ad agency. Uh, it's a good one, I think. Dia and Geo, which is the idea of seize the day and, you know, global every day and so on and so forth. Market capitalization, when you convert it into US dollars, is $68 billion. But it is principally listed in London. Its price to earnings ratio is 188 and its dividend yield is 2.33%. Let's get the chart up now. This is again the New York uh, ADR. When you look at the London listed company, you just see a sideways move for the last three or four years. And I think that's because notwithstanding their power brands, results have been fairly muted with a bit of emerging market uh, sales uh, growth, marginally disappointing then, Chris. Yeah, look, this, this, is a, this is a wonderfully diversified company. As you, as you mentioned there, it's got um, all of those, those whiskey and, yeah. and smear and, and vodka brands and the like. But beer is something that's perhaps not quite as well understood. And you've mentioned Guinness, but also in East Africa. They've got East African Breweries Limited. Okay. And, uh, you know, they, they do a, a huge amount of good in East Africa, not just in terms of the, the, the beer that they produce, but they, 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 they encourage barley farmers and, and that type of thing. So I think um, it's a company with a bit of a social conscience, and I know that sounds a bit strange for, for, for a booze company, but, but they, they certainly d do have that. Mm. So I think, um, yes, um, unfortunately, I think their, their, their pound earnings have been, been um, dampened a bit but because of the, the pound-dollar exchange rate. But nevertheless, the intrinsic this company, company are really very good. Yeah, and as we know, when you talk about people's affinity for brands, that's very strong with these kind of uh, global... I've arrived kind of liquor brands like, you know, the, all the Johnny Walker layered, you know, different colors. I don't even know which one's the more flash one, but, you know, the more expensive they get, the more excited people seem to be about buying them and spending them and giving them as gifts. Yeah, the ones that you tend to see here would be Johnny Walker Red, which is the kind of mainstream one. You got black and then you've got Johnny Walker Blue, Blue that's which right. is a very, very expensive blended whiskey. Mm. You've got green in there, which is a, a, a mixture of malts. It's got three or four malts in there. Um, I remember once going on a trip with uh, a very, very uh, a good guy called uh, Mickey Beloy. He was uh, you know, part of the, the, the whole um, Johnny Walker uh, crowd, and he really knew that company inside <laughs> out. And he, but he, he, he was very cautious about giving away the, the secrets of what was actually in there. Mm. But it's, it was a lovely whiskey, and I'm not a great whiskey drinker. But there are about another eight or nine uh, brands in there that we don't even see in this country. Exactly. I mean, Lagavulin is one I've heard of as well. So that's one of those single malt ones, isn't it? Or was it yep. also blended Lagavulin's whiskey? A single so there's malt. that kind yep. of thing. But then again, the broad range of opportunities they have with a portfolio of this size. Then it should also be mentioned that for some reason or another, according to my notes, they've got a 34% stake in Moore Hennessy, which is also the balance of which is part of LVMH. LVMH. The yep. booze part of LVMH. Yeah. So really, when you talk about the global reach, so really just a question, I guess, of performance relative to expectations. The price to earnings ratio is in line with the rest of the market. Yep. Maybe earnings haven't really geared, you know, ratcheted up at the pace people would have liked to see, but it's certainly only a matter of time, in my opinion. Yeah, East Africa breweries, they also own or have a stake through into Vintuk Lago, which of course is present in our market. Okay, if you had money in London or if you had money offshore with this one, would you be looking at? I, think this, I think this is a sleeping giant. Uh, that's probably really good. I'm, I'm hot on this one, and I think once the economy, the global economy starts picking up, this one is beautifully positioned mm. for it. Good, exactly. And these m global multinationals are very good at managing costs, cash flow, banking. One of the real reasons why you know, global capitalism remains so strong and resurgent is that these corporations are run by people who really pay a lot of attention to the internal operational cash flows and other dimensions of companies at that scale. Okay, good. So we're going hot on that one.